दिस इज आरी शर्मा सोल्यूशन क्लास ट्वेल्व चैप्टर टेन डिफरेंशियबिलिटी एक्सरसाइज टेन पॉइंट टू डिस्कस द कॉन्टिन्यूटी एंड डिफरेंशियबिलिटी ऑफ एफ एक्स इज इक्वल टू ई रेज टू द पावर मॉड्यूलस ऑफ एक्स ओके फॉर रेफरेंस आई हैव गिवन यू दोल्यूशन दोज वॉन्ट टू देम डू इट देम सेल्स फॉर देम and for the logic and reasoning for others uh, let us understand one by one the first thing here is the modulus x modulus x is simply x if x is greater than equal to 0 uh, then it is going to be x but if x is less than 0 then we because it will be negative so you have to put a negative in front of it for example if it is negative 2 you have to put a negative by yourself so in order to make it positive because modulus always gives you a positive result that is why we have written negative x because we want to make it positive so x and uh, this negative uh, x for x greater than equal to 0 and x less than 0 is well known to us and this e raised to the power uh, something which is modulus here will remain the same e raised to the power everything it just depends on the modulus so we will write this again fx is equal to e raised to the power x and e to the power minus x depending upon whether because when we open the modulus x there will be two cases if x is greater than equal to 0 it it is e raised to the power x if x is less than 0 it will be e raised to the power negative x right so continuity and differentiability Uh, what we do we just go to the left we go to to the right we try, try to show them they are equal and then if, if they are not they are not continuous or or differentiable so left hand limit and right hand limit i am taking for x equals to 0 because x is the point where it is actually getting 0 so we have x equals 0 minus h which is a minus h x equals 0 plus h which is h on the right hand limit so limit h tends to 0 in the place of x replace it by negative h Okay, left hand limit e raise minus h because zero minus h, which is essentially minus h only. Uh, before that, always uh, do this kind of thing. X tends to zero minus. That is, you are you just want to show or tell the examiner that you have you are going on the left. That is why it is left hand limit. So what will be the function? X is less than zero. The function will be used as e raise minus x. And e raise minus x because in the place of x you have to replace it by negative h. In place of h you re replace it by negative h. E raise minus of minus of h is e raise h. Okay. So e raise h is now you can apply the limit. Limit h tends to zero. So it will be e to the power zero. Anything not only e anything to the power zero is always one. Similarly here right hand limit limit h tends to zero uh, zero plus. So you are you are telling that I am going on the right now. So zero zero plus h that is h you are going to replace, and for that on the right the function has to be x greater than equal to zero e raised to x. In place of x I have replaced it by h e raised to h. Now replace it by zero e raised to zero is a one. Anything to the power zero is one. So both are one. So left hand limit and right hand limit both are equal to one. You can e easily say the function is continuous at x equals to zero. Along with this you have to check one more thing. Which is, which is uh, what is the value of the function at this point zero? F zero is what is zero is what e to the power zero, which is going to be one again. So x equals zero continuity is established. Now we'll go, uh, turn our direction towards the differentiability. Okay. So differentiability, we already uh, uh, the basic thing we have already done. That is when x is greater than equal to zero, x is less than less than zero. What will be the uh, value of e raised to the power modulus x? So now we are coming to the differentiability. Left hand derivative, right hand derivative. X the derivative is given by f x minus f c by x minus c. C is zero in this case. So limit x tends to c here. So x will be will taking zero minus h on the left part. Right part we are going to take x as zero plus h. That is x is negative h here, x is positive h here. So now limit h tends to zero uh, minus. That's just to show that we are going on the left. And e raised to the power minus x we are going to use because uh, of course the function says that. 
and f0 is what we have just computed f0 e raised 0 is 1 and in the denominator what will be x minus c c0 so you have just negative h so just replace it by negative h in the denominator okay uh, this also but limit x tends to 0 plus and 0 plus means we have to fx minus fc again the function will be different it will be e raise x in this case because we are going on the right hand side which is x is greater than or equal to 0 so e raise x minus 1 divided by h and i'll just replace x by h uh, in the left hand limit x will be replaced by negative h so it will be e raise minus of minus h that is e raise h minus 1 by h here we have e raise h minus 1 by h now we know what we have to do limit h tends to 0 oh uh, remember that uh, minus h is already there on the left hand limit okay e raise x minus 1 by x limit x tends to 0 is 1 we already know that so when you apply this limit here also we apply the limit on the left hand we have an extra negative which is in the denominator so this right hand is of course 1 but the left hand we have a negative also so let us have a negative here so the left hand uh, derivative is negative 1 right hand derivative is 1 okay i'll just uh, put a negative here just now because this is uh, negative here so this is negative so left hand derivative right hand derivative they are not matching we can just say that the function is not differentiable at x equal to 0 though it was continuous at x equals to 0 differentiability is not established continuity is established okay so this is how you have to do this uh, e raised to the power modulus of x so cons continuity yes differentiability not yes so you have checked at x equals to 0 here discuss the continuity and differentiability of this function so at x equals to c it is 0 at x not equal to c it is a uh, this function x minus c cos 1 by x minus c so left hand limit and right hand limit we are going to check and x will be because the point is c here already given in the question so c minus h will put on the left hand limit a right hand limit this is the point c i'm talking about uh, either you want to go to the left or the right and just subtract small h add small h and x is equal to c plus h c minus h and c plus h and replace it uh, in the place or put it in the place of x so x is c minus h minus c cos 1 by x i am writing it as c minus h minus c here also same thing this is c plus h so x is c plus h minus c cos 1 by c plus h minus c okay so this goes negative h cos uh, cos of minus 1 by h it is and this cos minus theta is is plus cos theta and please remember everywhere you have to put limit h tends to 0 that i have been telling you uh, always that i am not writing it just because we want to save time and effort but you have to write this limit h tends to 0 everywhere so h cos 1 by h on the right hand uh, limit cos minus theta is what cot cos negative theta is uh, plus cos theta so this cos whether it is negative or positive doesn't matter uh, since we have a negative h here we have negative h cos 1 by h you see this is h cos 1 by h okay now cos and sine they are bounded function how they are bounded function because the value whatever you put inside theta it will always give you the value between negative 1 and 1 right uh, let me show you here also see this is a sine function it is always bounded that is it will be the result of sine any theta will be always negative 1 to 1 in between so cos 1 by h will always be you know some value but i am not talking about that h 1 by 0 that will give you cos infinity whatever it is but in front of that you already have a h this is also h that is you already have a h in front of it so whenever you put h as 0 whatever comes outside 0 into infinity or 0 into undefined is also 0 right so you have a 0 on both the sides because h is already there 
both where you have the cos of h is a bounded function that is a separate disc discussion but h is uh, is uh, already there so the limit exists limit exists or not because zero zero on both sides we get zero okay so now let us come to the uh, the left hand derivative and right hand derivative let us see that so this fx minus fc by x minus c so let me just show you how this uh, left hand derivative works x equals c minus h will put here x equals to c plus h will put here so you will just see what what we what uh, you are going to get you are going to get what this is uh, x equals c minus h of course so let us put x equals to c minus h here and uh, when we put here fc is already zero because it is already given in the question when x is equal to c it is going to be zero so fc c minus c minus c zero so F, fc is zero i know it's given in the question also so fc minus h we already done that minus h cos 1 by h was there we already computed this for the limit so i'm just writing it again and in the denominator you have x minus c x x is c minus h minus c so it is negative h minus h minus h gets cancelled so cos 1 by h it is again the same discussion goes that is uh, this if you put a there is no h please remember you have to deal with cos 1 by h separately so as i said cos 1 by h is a bounded function but what will happen when you put a zero in place of h it will be 1 by 0 1 by 0 is not defined you don't know what it is so cos of not defined how can you compute cannot compute can you compute no you can't right here also on the right also say cos 1 by h will only come so when cos 1 by h though they are equal but they are not defined in the limit we said when when we were computing the or trying to find out the continuity i said h is in front of that whatever you do cos cos 1 by h whatever whatever comes h is zero so everything will be zero but here it is only cos 1 by h so it is not defined cos 1 by 0 how can you how can you uh, contemplate or define or uh, you know argue so not defined both the sides not defined so fx is not differentiable at x equals to c that is your that is your uh, final uh, verdict of this question is sin x modulus of sin x differentiable what about cos modulus x so for those who want to do it themselves i have ref, uh, given a reference of solution but for those who really know, want to know the logic and reasoning let me tell you that we have to talk about sin x first sin x value is always between a negative 1 and 1 now what what points we find out wherever it is 0 so it is 0 at 0 sin 0 is 0 and wherever it is touching or crossing the x axis that is the zero point so when the uh, zero is coming sin 0 0 i can i can write it as 0 into pi and sin 1 into pi that is sin pi here it is zero and then we have sin uh, 2 pi that also is zero so sin any sin n into pi see 2 pi also it is zero because it is crossing or touching the uh, x axis so 0 degree 180 degree 360 degree all these n pi n is the uh, the numbers from 0 to you can go go up to infinite and this n can be negative also so it can be to negative uh, infinity also so you can call it as okay that we are talking about the the numbers which are actually the integers so it is very clear from the diagram that all the n pi values is giving you a zero value so what what do we do in uh, continuity and differentiability we all always check at where this when this function is going to be zero 
okay so the maximum value and minimum value of sin x i already told you is always between minus 1 and 1 sin x or sin theta whatever you write it is a bounded function we already saw just now so this is uh, uh, the boundation and the value of sin for any n pi is 0 so our point of contention for the differentiability or the continuity will always be that point where it is going to be 0 and this is where uh, the quadrants I, I need to show where where the trigonometric function are positive or negative so the first quadrant all are positive second quadrant sine is only positive third quadrant only tan is positive fourth quadrant it is always cos cos positive first quadrant it all are positive so when you go round and round that is one round is 2 pi so first is 0 then we have this one as pi then we go to 2 pi then we go to 3 pi like this 1 pi is 180 degree so every time when we get n pi we get even numbers and odd numbers also so n pi sin n pi we have sin n pi plus if you n pi minus theta it will be it can be in the second quadrant or when you do sin n pi minus theta it can be in the fourth quadrant also same way if you do sin n pi plus theta it can be in the in the third quadrant or sin n pi plus theta can be in the first quadrant right so sin n pi minus theta depending upon whether it is odd or even whether it is uh, 0 180 2 or 360 or likewise you know you just add 180 one day 180 the n pi minus theta and n pi plus theta will change it will not remain same please remember that is why i showed you this add sugar to coffee you have to be very clear about this right so this concept is very important because uh, most of the solutions which i have, i have encountered they have already all, only talked about n they have not taken this n uh, even or n odd separately because this is very important because every time odd is there the uh, value is different even the value will be different so let us see here left hand derivative and right hand derivative for uh, let us uh, take the even i will leave the odd one for you just for you to have uh, go through it because after all you are the guys who are going to give the exam so mod x is what x greater than or equal to 0 negative x if x is less than 0 same way sin x if you sign if you uh, remove the mod of sin x when it will be uh, negative x or positive x when x is greater than or equal to n pi it will be sin x positive that is when you are going up when you are going up it will be sin x right but when you are going down because when you are going down, when you are going from 0 to negative 1, by yourself, you have to put a negative sign in front of sin x so that you, you don't go to the negative y-axis. You always have to be on the positive y-axis for the modulus. That is why it will be minus sin x for x less than uh, n pi. Why n pi we have taken? Because at that n pi's, this function is becoming 0. Right? So these are the these this n pi is the point where we are going to check for the uh, left hand uh, derivative and right hand derivative, and this we have to check separately for even and odd. So x equal to n pi, n is even. You have to show to the examiner for odd also. Please remember, you can't just say that n is any number. They are even and odd, and the different uh, version is there. Solution is there. So fx minus f uh, c, excuse me, by x minus c. This uh, c is n pi here. So left hand derivative, what do we do? x equals to n pi minus h we'll put. And uh, on the right hand derivative, we'll put x as n pi plus h. So x is n pi minus h, x is n pi plus h. So put it in uh, this formula fx minus f n pi. So limit x tends to n pi uh, plus uh, minus you can say on the left hand uh, part 
and x tends to n pi plus. Uh, I've I've written it differently. Just uh, you know, correct this mistake. N pi minus and n pi plus it is. I've uh, written it. Uh, you know, uh, I swapped it actually. So n pi minus so limit h tends to zero. F x is what sine. Now n pi minus h when you are on the left, x is less than uh, n pi. So you have to use minus sine x here. Sine minus sine n pi minus h and minus sine n pi divided by x is n pi minus h so n pi minus h minus n pi what will be there n pi minus h minus n pi n pi n pi gets cancelled you have a negative h here now sine n pi we have started our discussion with that every sine n pi is zero so you can you can just write it zero here also we'll do the same thing limit h tends to zero now what which function you are going to use you are going to use this x is greater than or equal to n pi here so it will be a positive sin x but in place of x you have to replace it by n pi plus h please remember minus sin n pi is of course zero let me just compute it because eventually we are going to replace it by zero what is x minus n pi here n pi plus h minus n pi n pi n pi gets cancelled you have h here Okay, what do you get here? This also zero. So you have a negative, negative. You can just cancel these out. Sine n pi minus h uh, divided by h. So what is sine n pi minus h when n is even? Even is what? Zero, two pi, four pi, six pi like that. I told you already. Eight sugar to coffee. 2 pi means just assume that it is 360. When you subtract something from the 360, that quadrant will give you a negative sign and uh, sign negative sign. Okay, sign n pi minus theta is going to be minus sign theta if n is even. Okay, this is very important. So n sign n pi minus theta is going to be negative. This sign h negative of this. You have in the denominator h. Now limit h tends to zero. You already know this sine theta by theta. Limit theta tends to zero is going to be one. So sine h by h is going to be one. Negative is all negative was already there, so it will be negative one. Similarly, on the right hand derivative, same thing you are going to do. Even we are checking so sine n pi plus h, n is even. So it is zero, two pi, four pi like this. So when you add something to it, n pi plus h. So you are coming here and here everything is positive. A means all are positive. So all are positive here. So this sine n pi plus h will be simply sine h. Sine n pi, n pi plus h is going to be sine h. In the denominator you already have a h. And please remember sine n pi plus theta. If n is even is sine theta. Please remember that. Sin h divided by h, limit h tends to 0, sin theta by theta, limit theta tends to 0 is always 1. So you have negative 1 on the left hand side or right hand side you have a 1, that means they are not matching. You can say that this is not differentiable at x equals to n pi when n is even. So n equals even we have already checked, n equals uh, odd, this is I am leaving it for you. If you have any problem just refer to this solution but i hope after this all discussion a lengthy discussion you will be able to solve it for that you need to know where sign is positive where sign is negative that is the uh, you can say the basis all sign positive here uh, only sign positive here 10 positive here cos positive here in the first quadrant everything is positive sign cos 10 cosine cos 10 doesn't matter so i hope you'll be able to do this or I am leaving it for you as an exercise uh, or this will also check whether you understood the UN part also. So 1 and minus 1 will come and that will also show that this is not differentiable. Left hand derivative will not be equal to right hand derivative. That is that is showing that it is not differentiable at x equals to m pi. So the modulus sin x is not differentiable. Coming to cos modulus of x. Cos modulus of x is simply cos minus x or cos plus x. If x is greater than or equal to 0, x will be replaced by a negative x. Oh, sorry, positive x. 
If x is greater than equal to zero, only we have, this modulus is only at x, not at cos, right? And what when x is less than zero, mod x will be replaced by negative x. So cos x and cos minus x. What is cos minus theta? We already seen a number of time, times cos minus theta is uh, cos theta only. Okay, cos theta and cos minus theta, they both are cos theta only. So when, whenever we do every this, it, it, it will always be cos theta. So cos theta is differentiable everywhere because cos minus theta is cos theta because sin minus theta is minus sin theta. And sin theta is theta. So sin theta, that's why if sin mod, sin, uh, mod x it would have been, then we have to talk about sin in length. But cos mod x is simply cos is cos everywhere. Negative positive doesn't matter. Okay, this is all about this discussion. Thank you so much and take care of yourself.